Beloved in Christ, I'd like to thank you once again for joining us in our study of God's holy and a divine word. I'm evangelist and teacher Joseph A. Brown. Beloved in Christ, one of the greatest possessions that you and I have as believers is the mind of Christ. It is such a great and valuable thing that many of us do not recognize what possession that we have. To have the mind of Christ is simply to say that we have a mind that is geared toward God, a mind that is possessed by God. And beloved, there is nothing greater in this earth than that. There are many people who consider themselves to be Christians, but they do not have the mind of Christ. They have a mind of their own creation. They have created a God or a God-like figure in their own mind of what they think God really is like. And sometimes we as believers do not recognize that that is actually what people call God, their higher power, their man upstairs, the one whom they feel that they are accountable to one day. But yet they live their lives as though they're dictating to God. I remember years ago, a neighbor and I was talking and I thought I knew this person quite well. I had done some work at his home. I had um, uh, uh, helped him uh, build a upstairs room in his house. So I had time to talk with him and to speak with him and and there are times I spoke about the Lord and I thought that he had an understanding of what I was talking about. But in a conversation we was having about something that was supposed to take place in our neighborhood and we spoke about the council people who were in control of that happening. So I suggested to him that we might need to pray in order that God will guide of the council people in order to do the things that we thought was the right thing to do for uh, the neighborhood. And I remember him looking at me kind of strange for a moment. And then he said to me, we don't have to do nothing like that. He said that, uh, 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 you know, um, hearing or listening or following the Bible is not really for today. Uh, we have the ability to do things on our own now. Basically, he was saying that the Bible in the olden days was like a training wheel for us and now uh, we can do it on our own and we don't need to pray we just need to simply go to the council meeting and tell them what we expect of them because we put them in place and beloved it stunned me because I did not think that he thought 
that way. I thought he looked at God the same way that I did. I thought he looked at Christ the same way I did because he was going to church each and every Sunday. So I thought for sure he had a better understanding of who God is. But beloved in Christ, that is not true. There are many today who believe in a higher power, but it's one that is made in their own image, one whom they can dictate to rather than listen to. They consider the Bible to be archaic, obsolete, of no value, for today is full of fairy tales of things like a whale swallowing and then spitting out a man, a devil that really doesn't exist, a man who claims that he actually walked on water. A forbidden fruit that was eaten in a place called Eden by a man and woman that was simply an example to us but never really existed. Scientifically, they say, it doesn't make any sense. Logically, it doesn't make any sense to the mind of, of the natural man. It is not truly real to them. They don't take it by faith like you and I do. But we think of that they do. And beloved in Christ, when you and I are possessed by the Spirit of God and our mind have been renewed, where now we have the mind of Christ that is the greatest value, the greatest possession that any man, woman, or child will ever possess in this life. And not everybody can have this. So, beloved, this is what separates those who are in the world, those who believe that they have something but have nothing, and those who have the mind of Christ. I want us to turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, beginning at the ninth verse, so we can better understand uh, what we really have as a born-again believer. In the ninth verse, it's reads, but as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. This is why, beloved, to the world, all this talk about fate, the cross, and all that is foolishness to them. They do not fully believe because it is impossible for them to truly grasp the fullness of 
of the Godhead. That can only be done, beloved, when we are possessed by Christ, we are filled with the Spirit of God, and we have had our mind renewed by the Spirit of God. And beloved, that is what brings uh, the separation between those who say to believe and those who actually believe. For the, in the 10th verse it says, But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. Revealed what to us? What He has prepared for them that truly love Him. We have possession of that because now we have of the mind of Christ. We can walk in faith because God has revealed the fullness of the blessings that awaits the believer who trusts unto the Lord unto salvation. You see, Jesus had no doubt of what awaited him. Because he had come from there. So, beloved, he had seen. He had been uh, 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 full of the knowledge and the wisdom of God. And the understanding of who God was. And, and as the word says that no man had seen God except Christ. Who had been with God. Well, beloved in Christ. Because now we have the mind of Christ. We have a greater understanding of who our Heavenly Father really is. And that's why, beloved, we can stand in faith. We can trust our God, knowing that He will always keep us. He will always deliver us because we are His possession. Glory be to the living God. Beloved in Christ, we're not living this world life in doubt, in not understanding, but rather we are understanding where our stand is in God. The same way Jesus understood his stand in God. Until the disciples had been possessed with the Holy Spirit in the day of Pentecost, beloved in Christ, it was then they went with authority and with power into the entire uh, known world sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because now they had been imbued with the power of God. And so, beloved in Christ, that same power is now in you and I. Uh, but the greatest of all possessions is the mind of Christ. And beloved, when you know what your end results will be, it gives you the authority, it gives you the strength, it gives you, beloved, the inner workings in order to know that what's in this life is not worth giving up. For the life that is to come. We can push aside this life. We can push aside in our uh, 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 desire to, uh, to run after things of this world. Because of what now possesses. Us, and that is the mind of Christ. The Word of God also says in the 11th verse, For what man knoweth the things of man, save or accept the spirit of man which is in him, 
So, beloved, he is limited. The natural man is limited in order to understand the mind of Christ. He cannot understand it. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Only the Spirit of God can reveal to you who he really is. The natural man, beloved, our natural ability is limited. It knows of himself. We know of ourselves. But beloved, because of Christ that now liveth in us by his holy and divine spirit, we can go beyond just knowing us as a person. But we can know the mind of God which is the greater blessing of all. And beloved, the world cannot know that. You know, just like I thought my neighbor knew that what he was saying was out of line with a true believer. He literally was saying that God need not possess us any longer. We need not even trust in Him any longer. We simply just needed to do the things we needed to do and then expect God to respond to our dictation. And beloved in Christ, that is out of line with the true believer. It is God who dictates uh, to us. And it is based upon his wisdom, his knowledge, and not leaning upon our own understanding, but acknowledging him as almighty God. Because, beloved, when you look at the 10th verse again, look what it says. But God had revealed them unto us by what? By his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. So, beloved, the mind of Christ that is within you and I who are believers, it searches the deep things of God. And the deep things of God, beloved, simplifies everything. And beloved, we live in a very complicated world because man choose to make things complicated. But if you really think about it, beloved, look at the birds of the air. Their life is so simple. Look at any creature that is out there in the world. And you will see that they have a pattern that they live their lives by. Beloved, God has given them that pattern. And has set it in them. And beloved, he has so done with you and I. But because as humankind, we desire to complicate things more than what they need to be. The 12th verse says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, which complicates things, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Beloved, this is the wisdom of God. That is, this is not the smartness of man. Man believed that he is smart. He believed that he is cunning. He believed that he can outwit 
God, well, beloved, one day he will find out that he cannot outwit God. But the word says to us, we have received not the spirit of this world, but rather the spirit that is of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Ghost teach it, Compar comparing spiritual things with spiritual, true teaching of the Spirit, comparing spiritual things with things that are spiritual, which ultimately validates the Spirit of God and the need uh, for uh, God. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Beloved, the natural man cannot receive the things of God. My neighbor could not receive the things of God, though he was masquerading as a Christian, though he was going to church on a regular basis. But it was not the Spirit of God that had been teaching him, that had been sharing with him. And as the Word of God says right here in His Word, it is the Spirit uh, uh, that teach it by the Holy Spirit that teach it. So, beloved in Christ, we have to allow the Holy Spirit of God to truly teach us how to fear God, how to walk in His wisdom, how to have an understanding of how He desired for us to live this life today. We can't just follow anybody just because they say we ought to follow them or they say that they are a leader uh, called by God. We have to allow the Spirit of God because of the mind of Christ that is within us that we can uh, 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 understand spiritual things and things that are taught by the Spirit of uh, the living God. Beloved, we have to trust the Spirit of God, not our own natural ability to know that God is who He say He is, but rather we trust the Spirit that teach it in the Spirit. And it will let us know what is of God and what is not of God. And beloved in Christ, you can be assured of this, that God is not complicating anything for you and I. But rather, He is breaking it down by the Spirit of God that you and I can live our life in the fullness of how God desires for us uh, to uh, live it. But look what the word is, the, the word says at the end of the 14th verse. It says, neither can he know them because they are spiritually uh, discerned. Beloved, they cannot know it and they cannot figure it out because they are designed to use logic, designed to use uh, 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 all kind of logical thinking rather than of faith. And this is what Jesus was teaching the disciples that it is all about faith. It's not about logic. It's not about logic that Jesus walked on of the water. It is by faith. 
but we believe that to be true. It's not about the whale and Jonah being spewed out on the beach, but rather it is about the fate, the mastery of God to perform such an act. And that was an act of mercy that he lived in order to do what God had called him to do. And that was to preach unto the people of Nineveh. Beloved in Christ, this is the same way our God look unto us. If it was not by the Spirit of God, if it was not by the mercies of God, you and I would be in our grave even right now. But God has things for us to do. And he gives it to us by the Spirit of God. And so, uh, so when we wake in the morning, we know that God has a work for us to do that day. Just like the birds, the bees, when they wake in the morning, they go about their business. And beloved in Christ, we need to go about uh, uh, the Father's uh, business. But he that is spiritual judges all things, and that's us. Yet he himself is judge of no man. For who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Beloved, we have the mind of Christ. And we need to do our very best to keep that mind untainted. To keep that mind unchained by the things of this world. And to trust Almighty God. To be our answer. Because beloved. We have the greatest. Of all possessions. And that is the mind of Christ. That is what. Separate us. From the world. Not just our belief. Not just our thinking. And saying that God is good. But rather beloved. Because. The mind of Christ now possess us. And because of that mind, we can have what God says that we can have. Amen. Beloved in Christ, I pray that the Lord open your understanding to his will, to his word, and that you have a greater understanding about who you really are in Christ. Amen. Beloved, be blessed in the Lord. And may the Father open your heart to his understanding. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus the Christ.